Welcome back, everybody. It's another Whiskey Quickie, and today we're taking a look at the inaugural, the first ever bourbon release coming from Castle & Key. Now, there have been brands that have released Castle & Key distillate, but this is Castle & Key's first release, as you can see, with their very ornate bottle uh, and design and, and everything like that. Yeah, beautiful packaging. So at this point, if you're into bourbon, you more, 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 uh, more, more, more gold, more gold. It does fit well with the modern style here. But if you've listened to the podcast and you've been around bourbon for a little bit, you probably know what Castle and Key is because they have gotten a, a boatload of press about them over the past, what, five plus years yep. of reviving the historic old Taylor facility. And uh, that distillery. So, and that was out of commission since 1972, but they bought the site back in 2014 and brought it back into its great glory. And to be honest, it's one of my favorite tours that I've ever been on. It's like walking through history. It's a really cool place to go and check out. Um, and then this, and they also had released uh, a rye before this as well, but this is the first time that they are releasing their first branded straight bourbon. And bottles of these sold out in mere minutes when they first released, but now I think they're a few batches later. So you can probably swing by the gift shop and get one. The age on it is four years old. It is 98 proof, 98 proof points, and it has an SRP of $50. I think the interesting question, everyone wants to know, who made this juice? <laughs> Was it Marianne? Was it another guy? <laughs> Whomever? Was it somebody else that we know that used to be the master distiller over at Four Roses? Don't know. The mystery will remain unsolved. That's right. But yes, it's a beautiful place. Perfect balance of old and new. Like they did a great job restoring that place. It's a uh, can't say enough how cool it is. Mm -hmm. You should definitely head out there. So, but let's, let's go ahead. Bourbon. Let's let's go ahead and review. Let's rate this onto the nose. Uh, it's some more Captain Crunch, Crunch Berry kind of thing going on there. A little bit of hay. Yeah, there's like a corn, like corn flake kind of thing, corn cereal, mm -hmm. you know, Captain Crunch corn. I, I think that's a corn puff. Sore. They have, I mean, they have kicks. Remember kicks? Yeah. Yeah. Well, kind of, yeah, kicks. Yeah. Yeah, they're like the little tiny like corn puff balls. Yeah. That was kicks. Yeah. I think that's kind of what it is. It's kind of what I get off of it a little bit. I like that. Kicks is like corn puff balls with a little bit of sweetness. Mm -hmm. Just a hint. Just but a always, hint. always add a little more sugar. <laughs> of course you did because there's not enough sugar in the our yeah. processed american foods we get already exactly. <laughs> all right add that and some uh some corn syrup to it as well as a lot of donuts <laughs> <laughs> and orange juice all right here we go on to the taste yeah i mean there's some pleasant notes in there there's some uh a little bit of like a bitterness. Yeah, there's some bitter, but there's some like, fruity notes on the front, but you still get that like a lot of corn heavy, um, like grainy type of a little bit there. On the back, on the back, yeah, on the back palate. Because sure. as soon as you taste it, you have this good fruit forward taste. And then all of a sudden it transitions into uh, this kind of like bitterness. I don't want to say musty. It's almost like a earthy. It's more earthy. Than yeah, that. I was about to say it's like if you put like corn on the cob onto a grill and you know you light the grill on fire and you know you're yeah, trying yeah. to roast it and you kind of you know the fire roasted corn pretty much yep. and you kind of get that it, it's like if 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 some of the the leaves like get into your corn you're like oh what's that you know you just gotta like pick it out a little the bit. husk the husk that's what i was looking for yeah that husk kind of gets into it that's kind of what I, I get on the back palate there yep uh, so it's interesting to say the least but yep. let's go ahead and let's rate it on the nose where you at there Sideways thumbs. I mean, there's mm -hmm. some nice sweetness to it. Kicks, you know, we talked about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. But just want a little more. And on the taste. Sideways, um, there's, a, you know, some nice fruity notes at the front, but it kind of opens up in that earthiness, that husk kind of mm -hmm. farm flavors, you know, you're talking about. So, yeah. fire rusted corn. Yeah, and that's what it's like. We rarely give a, a big thumbs down on something. Like it's gotta be like completely like almost like undrinkable to be able to do something like this. And this one I think is definitely fits in the sideway thumbs category just because it definitely has that almost, I don't wanna say off-putting, but for my palate, it's definitely not there of having that sort of like, yeah, that, that roasted whatever like bitterness that it transitions to on the back there. Yep. And on the finish. Sideways, same. I say sideways, yep. Yep, same thing, you know, it's just, it probably just needs a little bit more 
oak influence, barrel in notes in there to help it, um, to help some of those corn notes, round out some of those corn notes. I agree. But with that, that is going to be our review of Castle and Keys, batch one of their bourbon release. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you next time.